Live from Press Corps World Headquarters, this is Zero Dark Press Corps. It's a live post-war calling show, hearing your first-hand accounts and war stories of battles from the previous conflict. So join the Discord right now through the link below. Hop in the General Voice channel and get ready to share your stories. And now, your host, nine-time winner of the Jeffrey Jennings Award for Excellence in Journalism, Jeffrey Jennings. Welcome to Zero Dark Press Score. As I attempt to, to reconfigure our outlook here, but that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zero Dark Press Score here in the aftermath, and actually in earnest, after, aftermath of the 39th conflict as well as the 40th conflict, which is currently underway. Plenty to talk about here. Fortunately, I was not around to see the Foxhole uh, Competitive League, but just a reminder that there's still a thing, and that this weekend we're going into what I believe is the semifinals. I think uh, maybe Tox versus SNP, maybe a rematch of sorts, but plenty of exciting things to go around. Excuse me, I've gone into, gone into the Ponson Bees liquor cabinet, but that's okay. He's away, he's out on the field, in case you were here about 20 minutes ago. We also had recently, just, uh, just uh, today... We have the launch of the, my goodness, where is it? There you go. Launch of the, there we are, launch of the uh, Press Corps Radio, relaunch of it, a soft launch of sorts. Uh, final goal is to get something going on for 24, 24-7, but uh, I think we might, after tonight we might, we might give it a rest. But we'll get right to the calls here as the 40th conflict is underway. Uh, we've got another the call queue, and looking at first, we've got none other than Luck. Ladies and gentlemen, Luck, thank you for calling in here to Zero Dark Press Corps here in the 40th Conflict. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm good. Flying night, it seems. Everyone else vacated the office? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, everyone's out on the field. Well, that's what happens when you don't actually make it in between conflicts and one, one starts underway. But it is what it is. Tell me, uh, Luck. Uh, you seem much sober, much more sober this time around. Um, yes. Uh, well, you see, this time I actually did some, uh, I went to, there was a beautiful calisthenics place that they opened up, uh, down the street. And this, uh, this one guy who I have some business relationships with, uh, he gave me a beautiful deal on the place. Well, not on the place, but on a membership. And this, uh... Well, you, you, well, some of his uh, his staff are yeah. Well, they're uh, pretty fine, pretty fine glasses of water, if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, it's uh, good good to be back in the office. All right. Well, do you, what do you have for us here in the aftermath of the 39th, the second war, I believe, to be used uh, to have used gas shells, green ash howitzer shells. Uh, oh boy! Have you I encountered those talk. out on the field? This is actually. Um, I played j this war just about as much as I did the last. Uh, in fact, I found myself regularly alongside large operations to defend the regions from what is known as the Warden Weekend. Uh, specifically, there was a large incursion of 82DK into the Deadlands region on the Eastern Front. Uh, they proceeded to make an encampment base and an and a forward operating post in an attempt to claim the area outside of Callahan's Gate. Now, this was uh, a mere couple hours after some suspicious activity had been reported uh, going around the front lines via a, a spy of some sort. We believe that there was efforts of sabotage in a preemptive attack on us. However, we have no knowledge as to who committed these. All we know is that the agent was a sleeper agent, and we are looking into the matter. However, uh, their offensive, despite the allegations of some pretty nefarious tactics, were all repelled successfully due to the concentrated efforts 
of the, several of the colonial empire's finest, using specifically, like he's mentioned, the Green Ash artillery. It was greatly effective at rec at uh, repelling these hordes. Namely, I uh, I was with my good friend of the Swords of Marrow Battalion, Pupix. Uh, he and I did several successful bouts of artillery, both on the defensive and the offensive for the push into Callahan's Passage. We were part of the team that took the beginnings of what became the front towards Crumbling Post, as well as the ones that defended Outwitch Ranch and the Callahan's Gate. It all in all, it was a very successful uh, showing, and it was I Green Ash, sure Green Ash, or Standard shells. Uh, it was a combination of both, primarily Green Ash for the defense of uh, Callahan's Gate, and then a summarily, a summarily, yeah, that that word. Right. We continued using them on the offensive towards Callahan's Gate or towards crumbling posts inside of Callahan's Passage. All right, and uh, where did that wind up? That wound up with the colonists breaking through and uh, uh, taking... This was, yes, this was uh, shortly before we began our sweeping blitzkrieg forward. Forward, and uh, by that you mean westward or eastward? Uh, eastward. Eastward, that's right. Colonials started west. Yes. This is the 39th, uh-huh. However, I was not involved in any of the later conflict due to personal affairs uh, in the southwestern colonial regions with my business. Now, I can talk to you about that some other time, but I'll leave that for then. <laughs> okay. Now, in other news, uh, specifically I forgot to leave this out, but I gathered some footage for the press corps uh, directly, actually. Oh. Uh but more so as a contract worker, not as a direct employee. While okay. I, Lek, am in somewhat association of Mr. Joffrey here, I am in no way directly affiliated with them, with the organization known as Press Corps. <laughs> that said, I am pleased to announce a very impressive showing of the newest colonial model of armored car, specifically for the attack and and uh, defense of the location known as Callahan's Boot in the Deadland. This showing should prove that once again the Colonial Army is none to be trifled. Do you have Do you have that that footage for us available to view I, here on the radio? I do. However, it is currently being chopped up and edited. Okay, to that's be fine. More visually appealing, and it has not finished that process. I will be back with word when it is complete. Okay. Well, if that's all you had for us, Luck, thank you so much for calling in. It's always an interesting call with you around. Yeah, it's a bit shorter this night, but tell you what, I uh, I got some places I gotta be in the morning. Uh, lots of, uh, lots of, like I said, that calisthenics place, woo. I uh, gotta go talk to the owner. He's uh, He's got some deals to make with me. But, uh, yeah. Thank you for your time. Have yeah. a good rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, have a good one. Okay, that, he's, he's into some Scientology or something. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, if you're just joining us, please call in. Call in to the uh, Discord link through the Discord link below. P claim your stake in the Call Q channel, in the pound sign Call Q channel. And uh, place yourself in that queue so that we can bring you here on the air, live on the air. Coming up next here, as per the Call Queue channel, we have Rhodes Go Ever On. Rhodes, thank you so much for calling back in to Zero Dark Press Score. What do you have for us here? Hey, hey, it's good to be here again. It's always a nice and comfortable place here. Give me just one second to mm -hmm. do push to talk. Of course. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, cool. Excellent. Uh, well, hey there. So, um... The past couple of times I've been on, uh, I've gotten very, I guess, talking more on the philosophical ideas between, like, good play, intelligent play, partisan work, stuff mm. like that. This time, I have a little bit of a uh, Lodgy war story for you. Okay. And then after that, I would like to know your opinion or anyone else who comes in uh, later uh, on something about Lodgy. Okay. 
So uh, this is a War 39 story. I haven't had a chance to uh, get on for the 40th mm-hmm. uh, just yet. Um, and for this past war, I did play in uh, on the Warden side, specifically in Viper Pit. Uh, I did jump around to a couple locations, but this particular story is right at the beginning of the war. This is actually, um, since I took a little bit of a break um, around the like teens and 20s of the wars, uh, this is the first time I was able to get in within the first 30 minutes of a war. And for anyone who's listening, um, I would highly recommend trying out a war where you have very limited resources, where everyone's still kind of kind of scrambling for things. It's a very different war from the end game, like uh, FMGs and ACs kind of pushing around each other, trying to like position really well. It's a very different kind of deal when all you have is just like the the very bare essentials. Um, combat is very like I don't know about you, but it, it makes me feel very vulnerable just being on the front line because you don't have a lot of support with you. Talking about so you're talking about scarcity. Yeah, just the scarcity of resources because the war is only like one to four hours old, something like. That. Okay. Um. But back to the point. Uh, so, uh, this is the first time in a very long time where I've actually been able to join within the first thirty minutes of the start of a war. Um, I joined up in Viper Pit and. Uh, in that particular case, and this is mostly centered around uh, Lodgy, like I said, um, in that particular case, there were four salvage fields and three mines. They were all scattered in whatever random locations. Um, like, it would be a little tough to, like, describe. But all, all in the region? Like, uh, or are you talking yeah. about the whole... Oh, no, all... I'm just talking about Viper Pit in this Oh, case. Viper Pit, okay. And in, in Viper Pit, I want to say there was a good... Uh, 25 to 35 logistics people just there starting off with the war. And while that was nice, it, um, it came across a really interesting, uh, phenomenon, I guess. Um, it almost feels like as players were rushing out of the town hall, spawning in for the first time for the war, they, you know, they already have their hammer. They're not really Mm -hmm. sure what's going on. What else can you do? You go and find a scrapyard and you start scrapping it. And then that one runs out, and then that whole group runs to the next one. This is not something, anything new. Um, But this time, at least compared to, I don't know if this is the start of every war or something like that, but with the sheer amount of people, the sheer amount of logistics players in one place in Viper Pit, just scrapping and doing nothing else, there was a huge amount of BMATs that was sitting I, I don't say I, when i say sitting in viper pit i guess there was a lot of scrap and bmat income i guess that's what i mean to say okay and that yeah, was yeah. being turned out as fast as possible yeah i'm sure something very similar happened uh on the colonial side as well i don't think that's like just a warden thing i'm just speaking from my experience mm-hmm. so, so that's getting yeah. a pump. oh sorry go on well i was just gonna say so uh so w- w- describing the situation here did you do you have like a question to go into that or were you just you're still describing the situation um, I was about to lead into a question. Right, now. right. Go so, ahead. Here's a phenomenon that I'm seeing is that there's a huge amount of logistics people, and and towards like the latter the the later stages of a war, um, those logistics players get less and less. But in the very beginning, there's a ton, and they're like vultures going from one field to another. And some might even feel so bold as to go into the next region over to get some scrap. Um, but uh, for the most part, there's a ton of BMAT income. And I'm saying BMAT, obviously, like any of those resources. Mm-hmm. But here's my like overall question for the very beginning of a war is you have all this crazy amount of income just for BMATs, and you need to, you need to make shirts. There's uh, new fobs to be put up everywhere, the garrison supplies that go with it. You have, obviously, like the rifle and ammo. You have box holes that need to be put down, watchtowers that need to be put up. You got trucks. Uh, you got a lot of things that you need to do with those B mats, and obviously there's a lot of chaotically shifting priorities as the war lines start getting drawn. So my question for the discussion is: at the beginning of a war, what do you think are some of the most important things that should that those B mats should be invested into? And 
I think it would be best to look at the starting map for War 40, because it's one, a little bit different, but two, it also gives a little bit of a, like, like you could talk about specific regions, and you could use that as an example. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's real tricky. Um, my immediate guess would be foxholes, shipping foxholes out there, that way you can, okay, uh, where? you can, well, it depends on where the line settles, um, Depends on where it settles in terms of uh, where, uh, like, in and around towns. So you can uh, maintain, even if a push fails, uh, because a, a push early on could fail. But even then, having a foxhole to fall back on, as opposed to falling all the way back towards uh, town hall or, or something else, that would be that would be my first uh, go to. Um, after, well, probably actually before that, maybe even trucks. Just getting supply trucks off the off the assembly line right of off the bat. Uh, but after that, I, w I would say, I would say foxholes and uh, just early defenses. If you have like a natural terrain where both sides are going to meet, maybe sandbags, maybe a little cheaper. But uh, choke points like uh, bridges or right, on the like abandoned half ward. In between rocks and right. But some sort of defensive emplacement to form a line, to establish a line, claim it as your own. That way, if you even if you get outplayed. Uh, you can at least fall back onto something, so you get a little insurance, uh, which is what which is what those def early early defenses, opening defenses are, uh, when when a, uh, when a war is first unfolding. So that would be my answer. I see. All right. So your first priority would be. Um, I don't exactly want to say defensive because, um, well, like looking at uh, the uh, the fortieth war map out here, the middle territories are neutral. You could set your air quote defensive line at abandoned ward right um, and like pre-claim it as your own even if the town isn't yours yet you could still sit people in foxholes Th that's actually right that's actually what what i've been seeing unfold here from the studio that's what i've been seeing unfold uh for for the wardens in particular on both sides immediately but both sides in particular uh when the wardens claimed abandoned ward Early on in the opening few hours, they just started laying down foxholes, trying to push, trying to hold back the colonial tide. I think the colonials had a little higher population in the region. Uh, wardens would probably let me say a lot of population, but I can't confirm. But uh, they were able to hold the line at Sunhaven Gateway for a while, outside of the pits, then got pushed back to Sunhaven, then got pushed back to abandoned ward itself. And last time I looked at the map, uh, wardens finally fell back to their choke points at the, at the two bridges. Into, into the ward, but uh, other than that, um, yeah, it just gives you a little bit of buffer to maneuver, as opposed to the yeah. as opposed to the attacking force coming in right away. And again, as I said, as I say that uh, Deadlands overall, uh, both sides had to rush the central regions. So uh, defensive, yes, but a very aggressive defense, which is just an oxymoron, I guess, in its in a, in a way. But, uh, yeah, I don't really know if there is a fancy word for that, but I know yeah. exactly it's, what it's you're It's not saying. turtling. It's not turtling where you only stay in Callahan's Passage and put exactly. down 50 foxholes around around the town hall. But no, this is pushing the foxholes, fo claiming, the, claiming your spot on the line as early as possible, and then from there, a basis in which to push forward and actually uh, skirmish with your rifles, so man-to-man. -man. But So if you, if you win, if you win the initial engagement, great push forward. If you don't, you have something to fall back to that isn't... Uh, you have like a hundred... You can fall back a hundred meters to someone waiting in the foxhole, some friendly waiting in the foxhole, as opposed to falling back 700 meters back uh, to a town hall. And now you've got enemies running amok unchecked. That makes a lot of sense. And um, I think one of the subtle points you brought in there was having multiple lines of defense. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've noticed on both sides. Um, Kind of towards the middle of the game, where you look at the map uh, on uh, either Colonial or Warden side, and you'll see that there is a town hall um, or a FOB, whatever, as long as it you know is uh, tiered up. And they have the circle of foxholes. Somebody took the time to make a circle of foxholes at the maximum range of the garrison, you know, so the AIs can shoot. I'm sure you've seen that. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, what region are we talking about exactly? I'm oh, sorry, I, this was not a specific region. I'm just saying, like, in a general sense, oh, okay. I've seen this a lot in previous war, uh, where there's an FOB that has a ring of foxholes around at the furthest possible, like, distance it can and still have the AI act. Mm -hmm. 
but there's no second line to that. And I think um, as important as those foxholes are, whether those foxholes are around a key FOB point for future defense, or if you're laying them right along abandoned ward to go back to our last example, like you need to have the people to go along with it, obviously. It can't just be uh, the AI. Right. And uh, it's, it's not even a defense that's supposed to last for a long time. It's something just to... Uh, this is playing aggressively, so when... Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that... Uh, I don't know how a faction works it out overall. I don't think they really do. <laughs> um, for the most part, I think mostly it's just kind of everyone going off on their own, minus a few operations or outfits that may be operating uh, on some higher level. But for the most part, uh, usually it falls into, okay, you got people like, okay, everyone rush the front, let's get into the fight right away. Either simply through the desire to fight or as a conscious strategic effort. And then you have other people who break off and then, okay, let's stay in the back line, let's make trucks. So I'm talking about like Cronus Winter, who will grab like five guys and then they will do nothing but rush the, uh, the scrapyards. Uh, this is all documented on his Twitch, but it's uh, he'll rush the scrapyards, rush, uh, rush trucks, rush uh, boxes, and, and just get pumping away on BMATs uh, nonstop. Uh, like a like a well oiled machine right off the bat, and uh, yeah. so the, so I was talking more so for the people who are just pushing forward. If you give them some, uh, if you attach engineers to them, fifty B mats at a time, uh, you can just strategically place down foxholes, just a small and just one foxhole in those opening few hours. Just one foxhole uh, I've seen is enough to uh, to stop you know three or more people at least until help arrives. Uh, to delay them slightly, they'll probably outgun you. But uh, you know, early on, you've got enough of them. But what, what frags? I think, and then those can foxhole can take those. It's, so yeah. So long story short, that's my answer. Yeah, foxholes, early early emplacements to stake uh, stake early. Out. You know, you know, it's like in Monopoly, where it's just a mad dash <laughs> to buy properties. Like you're buying everything, no matter what. Oh, I get what you mean. Oh, right. like okay, Monopoly foxhole. Where <laughs> yeah. <we're going. laughs> No, 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 it's uh, like the, the board game Monopoly where you just, yeah, if you land on something early, in the first few opening dice rolls, just immediately, just buy whatever it is you land on. Just buy, 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 buy. Um, that's, it's kind of that same mentality with foxholes. Just foxhole here, foxhole there, uh, and just cl put someone, stick someone in it, that way you have something to fall back into. And then hopefully you can communicate and, uh, and then move on up. Yeah, sure, if, maybe you'll abandon it later and it'll get lost, but that's fine. You've already reclaimed... You've already got yeah, ten guys on this town. The purpose that that served is all like it already served its purpose. Mm -hmm. It's more of an insurance. Okay, anyway, I'm belaboring the point, but yeah, that's my answer. I like that because that goes back to something that um, you and I have talked about in the past, um, uh, in previous calls, like way back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of territory is in this game very different from other games of territory. I, I, th I guess it's a little bit different now that everything's color-coded with the hexes, but... Yeah, but it's, it's part, fundamentally, it's still, uh, functional, functionally, it's still the same. And that's actually exactly the point I was going to make, is that, um, functionally speaking, and I've heard this, I want to say it was you, it could have been someone else, um, might have been Stranger Days, actually, that said, uh, territory is whatever area you can keep the enemy out of. Yes. It's not necessarily about what town halls you have or about what scrap fields you're mining from or anything like that. It's about what you can keep the enemy out of. Unofficially, uh, I call them hard points. It's so like a fort, a town hall, that's a hard point. Yeah. Whereas, uh, I guess, if there's a hard point, there's naturally a soft point, right? A soft point would then be... I'm the sure roads that are in between. Exactly. The roads, the, pl the fields uh, in between that, you know, you can't place, you can't place foxholes... Every ten meters, everywhere. So you form a line, and then everything behind that—that that is your territory, until someone flanks it. Absolutely. So here, I actually really—that's a really good point. I'm going to challenge your answer a little yeah, bit. Yeah, of course. And this will be the last thing. No, that's um, fine. I really like the idea of using those initial B mats to secure territory on like however aggressive you want to take that territory whether you want to really go on to like the enemy side air quote the enemy side of the battlefield to like hold off a town or if you want to put a couple foxholes and a few people on the roads in between them to like some like pre-war or early war partisan work my question then to you is 
what do you think would be a better investment for those early game like defenses those foxholes have put on putting them to secure a hard point that you'll take in the future or denying the enemy a soft point to keep them from their goal that's high level um it is a little bit but those are my questions <laughs> not high level but that's a, it's a little yeah it's uh that's tricky I would think the mentality of most people would be, I want to make sure I don't have to clean anything up um, before I make a mess in someone else's kitchen, if that makes sense. Uh, so then, so what I'm, that, that answer is leading to, uh, I, I, so this is, a per, this is actually personal flavor. Uh, if, if I were in that position, I would choose uh, defending something uh, or sorry, claiming something through a foxhole and then waiting for a CV to arrive uh, towards the front line, but still playing a little conservatively as opposed to going deep into, you know, two regions deep into the enemy, uh, finding where they'll most likely have a supply train and then place a foxhole there to ambush. That would be my go. That would be the first thing I could do because, um, yeah, the, the, I would think the benefits, I think, I'm sorry, the, the danger of losing a very important hard point like abandoned ward, losing that is a much greater penalty than any benefits I could have ambushing someone's truck uh, in the back line. At least, because it's a gamble, right? That back line is a gamble. Yeah. Not, not only could the thing you ambush be not that great, it's like a pinata, right? Oh, I just ambushed this truck. Awesome. Oh, there was nothing in it. I just killed two guys, whatever. Uh, and also, I blew my cover, and I wasted my foxhole. The BMATs I was going to spend on this fox, I did spend on this foxhole, ambushing something. Well, now that's all blown. Yeah. As opposed to a guarantee. Okay, now I've secured, I've secured abandoned ward. I'm sorry, I've protected ba abandoned ward from a rush because I put a foxhole right in front of the bridge uh, here in the opening 45 minutes. Um, so yeah, it, it, it can pay off in dividends. Yeah, you've got someone who's got. 700 BMATs ready to go off to a point, but it, it's a gamble. So it's, it's, it's up to you on how you want to play that. But for me, I would, I would go something a more guarantee, a more safe bet, and defend that hard point. I think well said overall, actually. Um, I was, uh, I'll be honest, my answer would be, like, if you have a big enough group, a, a soft point would actually, like, work out. But the way you're explaining yeah. that, I'm like, no, no, you're absolutely right. Like, for the... O yeah, just, if you have ten people, if you've got ten people working together in an operation and you're all talking, then yeah, do whatever you want because at that point, uh, you've uh, you can you can split off and do all sorts of crazy things. I'm thinking more so maybe I'm working with randoms, or I'm uh, yeah, or I've got as a small an group of three. Like where could I be the most benefit to my faction? Mm -hmm. So it, it, so the answer is really dependent on how organized you are. But yeah. As, as most things in Foxhole, that is the, mm -hmm. the answer to it, yeah. Um, no, I do, uh, like I said, I think you have a really good point on, um, like, securing a hard point rather than denying an enemy soft point. And if you're really good and you could look at the uh, warden side of things or the colonial side of things, depending on where you're at, and you're like, oh, I know the wardens are going to take uh, this town, so let's try to secure it first, get like really aggressive with it. And that's just how you and your team want to play. But yeah, you make a really good point. Those, those hard points, especially in the early game, are way too valuable to risk not taking early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I, like uh, for instance, in the Lynn of Mercy, uh, in the Lynn of Mercy, uh, mm -hmm. you could most likely guess that uh, if the if you're the colonials, oh, sorry, if you're the wardens, you would expect a colonial attack from the south, uh, from uh, towards Prairie Bazaar, right? Because that's the most logical place for the colonials to try and attack. Makes sense. If yeah. they go for the first coin, you're open to attacks from pretty much anywhere. Uh, so either a flank from south or from the west or from the north. But if you hit the Prairie Bazaar, you've got that peninsula to work with. Just cut off that bridge, and you're good. Uh, but if you're a warden and you're anticipating that, just place a foxhole down, uh, all, leave a guy on that bridge, and then maybe someone on the road leading up to Prairie Bazaar. And uh, I, I, again, I say that if you're in an organized group. You don't want to just stick someone in a foxhole, leave them behind, and then don't talk for them for about two hours. That's just mean. 
Um, no, certainly not. But, you know, again, working with others, uh, kind of like a... You, you know the term bounding attack? Uh, where one player sits aiming with their gun to cover another person who is moving, and then that second person sits to aim and cover the next person who's yes. bounding so, from behind them. Exactly. So at all times, someone has their gun forward and is looking at waiting for an enemy to come around the corner or something. Yeah, so in a way, it's kind of a large-scale bounding move. That's how I think, anyway. That's actually a good way to put it. Like, you know, the first person gets there with their gun out, so... And the second bound, I guess, would be with a CV to build the town. Mm -hmm. and not to leave it off the other side, but, like, I was actually... It's funny you bring up uh, the bazaar as uh, in Lynn of Mercy, because in Marbon Hollow, the Colonials have a very similar situation with... Um, oh, what? Uh, oh, was Lockheed. It in Lockheed the... in Marbon Hollow, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, Lockheed they, in the they southeast. Have a very similar situation there. Yeah, actually, kind of like the exact same thing. And that's how that played out down there. Lockheed a lot harder to penetrate just because you've got... Uh, that's that's the nightmare. You've got two... That's kind of like Kelpie's Main and Endless Shore, or at least the old Kelpie's Main, where it was yeah. uh, two islands with a with a bridge running through it. And there, and you had, oh man, you had the opportunity to build all sorts of things. It's kind of like an expansion of the bridge, more than anything. A bit, yeah, but because you can build on those small little islands, you can, like, at the very early game, you could, you really can have... It's like a super choke point more than others. It's a bridge that you can build a foxhole on, yeah. Yeah. So, um... As a last point on there, for those two things, looking at it from the Colonial's perspective, if I wanted to ensure that I kept either one of those towns, it's really easy to take one Colonial and put it on the bridge that connects it to the uh, Warden mainland. On the other hand, if you're a Warden and you want to secure that, there are, uh, well, in Lind of Mercy, there are two towns in this war, or two roads that lead up to in this war, but in Marvin Hollow, one of those roads is, goes into territory that's cut off right now. But um, you need to, like, secure those roads and the open space in between those roads. Like, it's much harder for uh, Wardens to secure that early game, but uh, they did. Was that ever challenged? What, in Lynn like, of did Mercy? Did Colonials ever attack that little area? Where we're at? Uh, Prairie Bazaar in Lynn of Mercy. I'm looking through the, uh, the war map right now. Oh, it looks like they did, and Wardens came through and took it. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's that's that was one of the stories we were following. Uh, colleagues came in, uh, yeah, they came in through the peninsula just because you know it's funny because the they had that peninsula and then the wardens came in from the north at Lockmore and took the peninsula at Mercy's wish. So but it was uh -huh. kind of, it was a kind of a mirror image uh, on yeah, both exactly. sides of the regional line. Oh, that is a little strange, but it is easier to attack from that area, so it makes sense. Yeah. And then it makes sense that, you know, the respective sides would take that back. That's good map making. Well, anyway, Rhodes, thank you so much for a great discussion on, on strategy. That's kind of uh, the remnants of Strat Chat. I remember that old show you used to run. A little bit. And that, uh, I was going to say, let's not talk about that too much. Uh, <laughs> there was much potential for that. And the planning and prep on that was nowhere near uh, what I would like, a level of excellence that I would, I would have seen in myself. Uh, I'm very glad you're hosting uh, a platform here that you could have people talking about, about their the strategies strategy. or their ideas for game balance or war stories or the cult religion of trains or whatever they want to talk about. Yeah, I don't know about that last one, but yeah, for uh, for stretch for stretch chat, you can uh, you can host your very own stretch chat here on Zero Dark. I can I can uh, oh I'll make God. room for it. Anyway, uh, thank you again for having me. Uh, yeah, great. Rose, thank you, oh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, you may have noticed that we're showing the map. The war map here on the radio. Here for uh, the conflict, the fortieth conflict. Uh, I I couldn't find. If I didn't. I didn't have time to download the footage for um, the 39th, But that's okay. Um, this is going to be an interesting, regardless. But next up on our list is Rufus. Rufus, welcome to Zero Dark Press Corps. Are you are you there on on the call? Hello. Can you hear me? Rufus, if you're talking, I can't quite hear you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. I, I know you knew you had some uh, troubles with your microphone, with the quality. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so, 
as I said in my uh, call queue, I am new to Foxhole. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, welcome welcome to the game. Yeah, I joined in on War 38 at one. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, so that's... Yeah, so we're in the 40th now, so you've had a, you've got one full war under your belt. Um, I'm assuming you joined in the middle of the 38th, and now you're here at the, at the onset of the 40th. Okay, tell me, what 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 are your initial reactions to uh, Foxhole so far? My initial reactions? Well, it was not what I was originally expecting. Okay, what did you expect? I expected... A simple uh, top-down FPS that involved a lot of strategy, but when I got into Fox, though, I realized there was a lot more than that and involved working and cooperating with hundreds of players at a time on multiple fronts and working with logistics groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not running with rifles. It's 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 something else. It's its own ecosystem. <laughs> So actually, so uh, having discovered this, what are your reactions now? Do you, do you find that a positive, or are you a little disappointed that maybe now eh, this isn't as uh, as easy of an experience as I thought it was going to be? Well, this is a game that most people, it's not for everyone. Right. However, I've been waiting for a game like this for a very, very, very long time. I've heard that for, before from a lot of other people, Cronus Winter in, partic in particular, but yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people where it's like, yeah, this is like the dream game of like a full-on breathing war that I get to participate in, like a, like a World War-esque kind of war. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really, really cool, and that, it's something I fell in love with as well. I can, can you accentuate, uh, you know, the things you really like about it, like the most? What are, you, like, what are your favorite moments that you've had so far? My favorite moments would have to be last stands because I've been mm. on the wardens for the last two wars. So we've been losing and making a few last stands. But I'm going to point out one directly from War 39 where I was down in a... Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. That's fine. Do you remember the region? It's the bath and... Uh, Add it somewhere on here. That's okay. Uh, you can go to foxholestats.com, and there's a semi-complete uh, list. Well, it's it's actually blocked off right now because well, the, the map is changed. I'll pull it up. I'm gonna continue the story. So, I've been down here for what, three days now, and I was uh, the medic mm -hmm. for a lot of operations to the south. Now, what had happened was the colonials had began pushing on us. Very hard, and we had a lack of armored support. The only reason we were able to hold off their armored is the uh, logistics was able to get RPGs to the front right in okay. time. Well, were tanks deployed? Were tanks uh, on Tank. the field at, at any point? There were two instances I saw any armored vehicles, and gotcha. that was a APC, and that was a... Really, it's only an APC that would run around with 20 people in the back and drop down. Hmm. Right. Right in front of the FMG. That's actually a grand old time. Mm. Oh, but, did, they, did they have the double HMG strategy? Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a classic. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Anyways, that was where the only armored support, but we were held up in a uh, fortress. I believe it was the bath. I'm still pulling up Fox and Stats. Anyways. We were completely surrounded and cut off from our logistics, and we held out for a good 12 hours before it came down to we were forced inside our walls. And we had about three people that would run around with medical supplies, nothing more, to keep people alive. I kid you not, I get revived no more than five times. <laughs> the, what, was, was this region towards the north? It was on the southern front. On the southern front, okay. This might not be available to view on Foxhole stats right now. Oh, the bats. This is in uh, the Drowned Veil. I've got it now. The bats in the yep. Drowned Veil. That's most likely where, where you were. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I can see it now. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's uh, there's a lot of water <laughs> in that town. That's why they call it the bats. Uh, so you were in Town Hall, in and around the Town Hall, I'm assuming? Hmm. I no, we were not. Uh, we were oh. somewhere down by a sprites game, 
it's March in the Wash. We are somewhere in between there. Okay. And what happened is that we were completely surrounded, and we were able to hold out for a good 30 minutes with uh, constant uh, green ash shelling from above. And I believe it was either one or two colonial uh, APCs set right outside the walls. If you tried to leave, you'd get mowed down. Did you guys have, did you have uh, gas masks? We actually ran out of gas masks. Oh boy. Oh no. So, we're all huddled into this very confined space. And we had all of our combat engineers grab all the B-maps and use every single bit of resource we had on building walls, voxels, MG nest, anything we could. Use it or lose it. Yep. We used everything we had. When we ran out of shotgun ammo, we switched the rifles. When we ran out of rifle ammo, we switched the pistols. When you ran out of pistols? Well, it had gotten to the point where we were down to six men who had, were holding this whole fortress. Did you run out of shirts? And what was decided was a complete withdrawal. So what we did is we had three guys go back with their pistols and began shooting out one of the walls while uh, one guy stood back with a rifle and held off the colonials. And what was funny is that all uh, six or seven of us were able to escape and run all the way to uh, Loggerhead Town Hall where we continued the war where we had left off. My goodness. So, in, in the end there, the, did the Colonials manage to capture any supplies in the baths? The only thing they found was 1,500 rounds for their pistols. <laughs> the most useless ammo type. Well, maybe not, but uh, certainly not something you want to repackage. That's, that's yeah, hilarious. I mean, I bet there was maybe a few, like, rifles or shotguns. Sure, right, right, there, right. There was no ammo. Left. You used it all. You used you either use it or lose it. We used literally anything we had. I can imagine. My goodness, how much shouting was there? Um, not necessarily shouting. I mean, there were colonials shouting at us, but how, how many times? How many times were you offered to uh, to uh, surrender, to abandon the town? I was not right next to the ball. Okay. But I never heard a single plea for surrender. Oh, no, no, no chance. No mercy. No mercy. What was kind of funny is that I forgot who it was, but someone put on Country Roads. <laughs> that sounds right, yeah. While three, I think it was three wardens with a single medic behind a sandbag, managed to mow down like 20 colonials when they tried the Russian. Oh, wait, wait, was this a friendly playing country roads? Yeah, it was a friendly playing country roads. Okay, okay. We enjoyed every bit of it. <laughs> it's such a, that's such a playful, happy tune. A playful, happy tune while getting murdered by... Yeah. Exactly, and so in desperate really times... when that whole front began to fall apart. I can imagine. Yeah, once uh, the bats falls, like you've lost them. cut off at the... I believe it was assault caps, mm -hmm. and uh, loggerhead fell not too long after our fort fell. Yeah, Drownvale is interesting. It's kind of divided into sectors. Have you know, with so much of the region drowned, but uh, <laughs> yeah, once your enemy secures one, and you haven't secured, once your enemy rolls up on uh, you know a certain amount of territory, and then you haven't secured the others because you know there's flooding. And all this, uh, all these choke points that maybe you haven't necessarily covered, they're gonna roll right in through the rest of the region. Uh, at least that's what I've found. There can be good pitched battles that last a while, but it's it's an interesting region to say the least. So it's like, an interesting war. Yeah, you like last stands. Like, uh, you like town uh, sieges. Uh huh. You like town sieges. Uh, I've been up towards Umbral, Deadlands, Piper Pit. Just a change of pace, to say the least. Yeah. There is actually one more story where I know this for a fact. We were held up at the baths, alright? The baths again, okay. 
and uh, it was the beginning of the colonial advance, but they had overextended and went. And what was funny is that through about three hours of hard effort by about forty wardens, we how were many able, wardens? How many wardens? It was like forty. We had logistics, artillery, medics combat engineers, everyone was working in unison, and we were able to take back the wash and cut off the whole front that they were beginning to form. My goodness. Okay, so there were 40 wardens, and I'm assuming as many colonials. Somewhere near that amount. Okay, sure. And you were just pushing southward, trying to take the, trying to cut the, or uh, take the wash for yourself. We took, they pushed in, we had already held, that cannot speak, we had already held the wash, and it didn't have that many defenses around it, because they had just capped it a day before, but they had overextended into our territory, and that was their downfall. I was not there for the official taking of the wash, so I have no idea what equipment they were able to leave behind, but I knew it was a heavy price to pay for the colonial. So you did wind up losing it? We did wound up losing the whole front. But the best way to put it is that we uh, fought for every inch of ground all the way up to the end. From, from, from your eyes, and I understand you, you're not, you weren't everywhere at once, and maybe you can't make the best assessment, but in your eyes, what led to the warden collapse uh, of the defense here in the center of the Drowned Vale? What, what, what led to that uh, defeat? Mm. It would be a combination of multiple things, but what I would really pin it on was uh, partisans. Mm, okay, so where were they operating? They were operating in two separate locations, but originally when the front was around East March, the Wash, and Bootnap, they had cut us off at Sprite's Game. Sprite's Game? Place. Where Where is that, I'm sorry? Oh, Sprite's Game, okay, yeah, yeah, it's in the Northwest. They had cut us off there, and the East March and the Baths were undersupplied for a good few hours, which led to a front, led to that front to fall. And then they were operating out of, uh, I believe it was either Singing Serpents or the Salt Caps, where they cut off most of our... Uh, yeah, that's going to do it. So the main logistics hub for the region, at least the crossroads, was Loggerhead, I'm deducing from there. Yeah. Loggerhead in the north, okay. Yeah, no, yeah, well, well when, when you've got commandos running about, uh, the only two other main roads uh, towards the front, yeah, you're pretty much screwed. How many how many times was your, were your trucks and your uh, reinforcements, how many times were they cut off? Were they ambushed? I, say, I don't know for exact number, right, but you were at the front. it happened quite a few times where we would have a pocket. We had East March, the Wash, the Baths, our fortress. They were completely cut off, and they would have to... To make their way back to Loggerhead. Yeah. That sounds like a nightmare. My goodness. It was a nightmare. Do you remember any kind of any regiments in particular that were there with you, or any regiments that were supplying you? Not exactly. There were no specific regiments. There were a lot of uh, people from all the regiments, but no specific regiment was operating there. Most right. were operating out of Vibersfit into the northern front. It was a mixed. It was a mixed force. Mm, the band of the misfits, <laughs> more or less. Well, that's and how how long did this battle? How long uh, were you were you able to all hold out? You know, you, you mentioned the last stand there, but how how much uh, how long were you able to hold out? Were the wardens able to hold out in John Vale after the initial invasion? How long? I'm sorry. Three to four days after the initial invasion. Three to four days. Wow. More or less nonstop. Maybe not nonstop, but... They never let up. Now, it's not like we got a good barrel of laughs, because I believe it was a Colonial and a Warden CB, and we packed about 20 guys into the back of these things. Mm -hmm. All right? And we uh, basically, if I had to describe it, imagine... Everyone fitted with shotguns and broadsiding each other. Okay. It was, 
it was interesting because they were trying to do the HMG strap, but then another CV showed up. Okay. <laughs> I just, I just love, I just love the double HMG uh, uh, tactic on, on those APCs because it's such a goofy way of fighting, and a lot of times it doesn't it works, work. It works. It, yeah, so, yeah, you're right. A lot of times it does work. A lot of other times though, it, it can be goofy just because <laughs> one frag can mess up everyone's day. Hmm. Um, what's another story? I don't want to eat up all your time. That's fine. I'm guessing we did have an armored car. You did have an armored car, okay. You want to know what happened to that? Sure. Were you in, were you in the armored car? It, we had multiple vehicles. This happened numerous times. These are cars, friendly so armored cars. Armored cars, a CV, and two APCs. Okay. They would push up past our infantry, all right? Hmm. And uh, Colonia would land a sticky or two on them, instantly gone. And what would follow was a Colonia counterattack with their own armored. And we were just not equipped to really deal with those situations. Oh, so you got ambushed? Not necessarily ambushed, but a uh, counterattack, if you will. Right, okay, so you, you, you got a... Uh... As soon as you lost your armor, the uh, the enemy's armor came roaring right back at you. Mm. That sounds like I that. Drowned Veil. Vale, I've heard I've heard uh, multiple stories come out of Drowned Veil vale for the 39th War, and uh, it's it's hard to believe the stories. But I mean, the way you describe it, you know, uh, you know, possibly, you know, from from your perspective. So take it as it is. But yeah, that's that's something else. So tell me, uh, is Foxhole turning out to be an even better game than you originally thought? It's a much better game than I originally anticipated, yes. But there are some times where I'll just get burned out with it. As, as happens, uh, it, it kind of relies, at least I found, it. Uh, Foxhole relies on a lot of self-regulation in order to not burn yourself out. As opposed to things that happen naturally, like, say, in the game of Team Fortress 2. Yeah, sure, after this round you can stop. That's a pretty natural place to stop. But in an ongoing war, yeah, where do you stop? The, the, the job never never ends. Mm. Yeah. Each, for this coming war, the 44, I haven't really gotten a chance to sit down and uh, contribute yet. Yeah. But for this coming war, I'm going to be a combat engineer. Instead of being a medic. That's a good step up. Yeah. And then for the next few wars, I'm going to be doing logistics. So. Uh -huh. tell, so tell me, actually, I'm curious. If you can call back next show, possibly. I know it's hard to schedule these things, but I'm going to ask a question here. And we'll, we'll close out with this. I'm going to ask a question. How, what is the most effective way do you think uh, a, combat action, a combat engineer can do? Out on the field. What is your what your effective. your opinion? In my opinion, a combat engineer is all situational. Mm -hmm. It really depends on what the situation is and how sure. they can contribute to that situation. Like, let's say armored cars are pushing you. The best thing for a combat engineer to do was build a AT gun nest and uh, be able to lock it down. But if you're pushing into enemy territory, I would suggest a combat engineer would be able to build sandbags and be able to stay with an infantry regiment, if you will. That's how they could contribute the best. I should have had you on earlier when uh, when I was talking with I was talking with Rhodes. <laughs> we could have gone into some strat chat there. Strat okay. Strat okay. Strategy, uh, Jeff. Anyway, uh, you know what? Uh, if you can. Join us net for ne the next episode when the fortieth war ends, and uh, yeah, tell me tell me your opinion on combat engineering. Then I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be uh you know cheeky here. I, I'm genuinely curious the before and after once you go into once you go into the role. Very curious to see what you get out of it. All right, okay. I watched the thirty eighth one, mm -hmm. and I really wanted to be in it, but uh, then you ended the call after the. Oh, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Yelling at uh, some particular Lekin employees. Yeah, that happens. 
I, I don't know how else to explain it. But anyway, Rufus, thank you so much for taking part of the conversation. Thank you for joining the Foxhole community. I uh, duly appreciate you coming on. You're welcome. It's been fun. All right, coming up next here, uh, Ryan from the 22nd Armored uh, Armored Cavalry Regiment. Ryan, uh, thanks for calling in. Uh, did you have something here for us here in the in the wake of the, in the wake of the 39th and the start of the 40th conflicts? Uh, I just want to say one thing. I found a book during the last war. It talked about like a legend of zombies, and it said the date's coming up. I don't know what it's about. I'm sorry, uh, what? Apparently, there's gonna be some. I found this old book that said there's going to be some zombie uprisings soon. Zombie uprisings? Yeah, sir, I, I don't know, man, but... Like the I undead? The undead, yes. Okay. <laughs> what, what, do you, was there a name on the book? No, Title? it was just like, it was like acrylic and just had a date on it. Okay. What was the date? I, I, I couldn't tell you. It looks like it had a date. Like, it just had acrylic acrylic uh, letters on it, and then it had, like, dots, so I assume that's a date. Oh, okay, so... what it is. is it, so this is, this is like a premonition. It's like a prophecy. Or like a warning. Like, like, like a prophecy, yeah. Were there illustrations? No. Well, actually, yes, there was. There was, like, a picture of a man. Like, his face is all mutilated. It's like, it's a, like, war like, it's like a warning of the end times, sounds like. Yes. Yes. Okay, well that sounds a little, sounds a little something. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but okay, zombies, sure. Okay. So, yes. you think there's, you're gonna, you're gonna be looking at zombies, uh, what, in the, in the, in, in the Deadlands? Rising up from the, from the graveyard just outside of, uh, um, uh, Sunhaven Gateway? I don't, I don't know, man. I'm, I just, I saw that book, and I just wanted to report it to the media. Sure, oh, okay, zombies, okay, well, uh, <laughs> uh, do, 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 you don't need to play coy with us, sir, please, come, come back, come back to us when you have some real, some real stories and some real news. <laughs> okay, sir, thank you, sir. Okay, but thank you for calling in. Zombies, come on, get out of here. Zombies in Foxhole. What are we doing? We're in the Foxhole War? Are you kidding me? Oh, boy. Hey, War Corps. War Corps, welcome. Yes. Uh, I, I know you didn't necessarily uh, uh, put yourself in the call queue. Did you mean to call tonight? Did you mean to get in here? Oh, uh, hello, uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, did you mean to get in here? Yes. Okay. Well, what did you have um, for us here in the wake of the 39th and the onset of the 40th? Oh, yes. Um... Actually, I would like to report something about a few disappearances. Apparently, there's rumors going around that the colonial squads are disappearing uh, around certain rural areas of the regions. What? Uh, disappearances of soldiers. Disappearances of soldiers? Now, or were these soldiers just cut off from communications? No, uh, these soldiers just completely disappeared. There have been rumor. We don't know exactly what have happened to them. Uh, the one that was in here previously, uh, was talking about, uh, a certain book. Uh, he kind of went a little nuts afterwards and just disappeared on me. Um, so here's what exactly happened. We found a, an ancient book that had to do with an occult, uh, something with the occult. A, okay, hold on, a book? Yes, a book. Um... From the looks of it, it seems like it's uh, of an ancient language, like thousands of years before v Veli Masaya and uh, Siva existed, exactly. Okay. Thousands Maybe there was something in that book after all, but go ahead. Apparently, yes, apparently there was an empire called the, Verni the, the Verninians uh, that existed here during the Bronze Age. The Verninian Empire. Which were the which were neither Sivish nor Mavelli Masayan, just to say the least. Okay. So what this book is detailing is a certain curse uh, brought upon by an ancient god, of course, an ancient god of the dead. They call him Lamach. Okay. So apparently, this was an evil demonic entity like God that was the God of the dead of this ancient culture. From the, from what looks like in the book, hang on, let me get it. This is some, this is some, this is some deeper archaeology here. I'm bringing back Ryan into the call. Ryan, can you hear us? Ah, uh, yes, I see. 
Ah, uh, yes, it says every tw- it says every ten or twenty years there shall be a harvest of thine dead, from of what appears. Harvest of the, like a dead harvest. Yes, like a dead harvest, like when demons come back and come to haunt the living, from the looks of it. This is like um, let's see. God. Ryan, do you I have the same the book? Which is really weird. I do. I'm actually looking at it right now at Warcorp. Yes, we are. Oh, you're both on the same. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Ah, uh, this ancient god appears to be a very demonic entity. Like it, it seems to be malevolent. Of course, it seems to have really bad intentions with the other gods. Okay, so what what ha- do, do you know, uh, if you can scan through the book real quick, do you know what happened to this ancient empire that faced the undead? Does it say anything uh, about see. that history? Uh, let's see. Um, uh, well, no, it, it, it mentions... Nothing about an empire, but I know this empire from archaeological studies that I have done in the past. Before I was, of course, put into the uh, Stevish Officer Corps school. From the looks of it, um, let's see. Um, it seems that according to... From what I've learned in the history classes, in my archaeology classes, this empire uh, fell for some unknown reason a few thousand years ago. Early Iron Age, what they describe as... Um, what they would describe as smelly and cursed individuals, from what they uh, seem. Okay. So, hmm, yes... So, Ryan, can you uh, confirm yeah. this that it's sm- that they are smelly and cursed? Uh, yes, I did, can confirm. Did they have did they have any special abilities? Could they fly? Um, rumor no, has they, it that rumor has it over time during the night specifically they gain armor and are and are like bullets, they, guns, nothing can harm them. So they get stronger yeah, just, at night. Yeah. Yes, apparently we saw something really fishy out there, like something with glowing red eyes, and it was just running really fast. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Vanas Gora Sayo Sonia Kata. Um, yeah, this, this, yes, it seems that this curse has affected many Bronze Age empires, from what I can tell, as well as the Iron Age. Um, we have no, apparently this curse, from what I can tell, this curse happened, is, can happen over a certain time period, uh, set over a few millennia. So, we may be actively in another stage in which the the curse comes back. Okay, so as Ryan was saying, like, that date was coming up. Yes, apparently so. This is just the one after. Apparently, 20 years ago, from what I've heard 20 years ago, that there was a curse that affected, uh, a, uh, nations. um, what was that island called? I forgot. The, uh, it was an island, of course, uh, like Fisherman's Row? Tempest Island? Uh, and, uh, it had a church in it, for one. And it seems to be very cursed. The island seems to have some really weird history. Uh, history of dead people. Apparently that island even has some weird history as well. Um, let me f- let me find the name of it. I uh, just can't remember it off. The That's top fine. Of so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna recap this very quickly. Uh, so in this, it ancient- is. In a- I'm sorry. Um, yeah. And it is an ancient island, of course. Uh, I I I need to think of the name. It's I didn't. Just, I, I didn't know you gentlemen were archaeologists. As I as I uh, go on, yes, this apparently it got so bad that the emperor had to flee this cat his capital. Not even the strong. Apparently, according to the book, 
Not even the strongest of walls could stop them. They climbed over the wall so badly. It got so bad that they would end up massacring cities of thousands, from what I've seen. Okay, okay, just, just, uh, a, just a, a, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh just, yes, so, Tempest Island. That's Tempest the Island. Okay, Island. gotcha. So yeah, just, Tempest. just to be, just to summarize here. Two decades ago, there was a curse on an island called Tempest that affected uh, the church in the surrounding areas. Civilians were massacred. Uh, apparently, from what I heard, um, or uh. Colonials surrounded a church uh, in Tempest, and they were subsequently massacred. Okay, okay. Uh, the Mr. surviving Bullcourt. forces called in gunboats to destroy the island, of course, to destroy their Okay, so I can't have you come here and here peddling, uh, you know, crazy conspiracy theories uh, based no, 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 off no, no, some no, no, book. No, 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 This is well-documented. The, the Tempest Island incident is a well-documented event, uh, from what I've heard. Tempest, I'm sorry, that such a report or a story never came across our desks here. Uh, again. Really? Really? Are you serious? Let me see that book. It also says that at one point the billion cowish nations put aside their differences to fight the undead. Wait, well, I haven't what? heard any stories Wait, of that. Hold on, that's, that's extremely weird. That's not what it says in my sources. It says that all the colonials were wiped out. Okay, hold on. So now you're, both of your sources are now contradicting. Yeah, oh my god, that, that is definitely weird. Okay, gentlemen, but... gentlemen, 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 okay, so, or I'm talking here with Dr. Ryan and Dr. Warcore, apparently, or at um, least pseudoscience doctors. Uh, gentlemen, please, you can't come in here peddling uh, some sort of no, crazy no, no, voodoo no, pseudo pseudoscience. I nearly got my of at the uni I nearly got my, uh... Dude, I nearly got my uh, master's degree from the University of Kirknell, you know. At a real right. university, I'm gonna have to fact check that. Uh, gentlemen, Apparently uh, thank, you in. thank you for calling in. Thank you for calling in, gentlemen. But please, uh, we can't come in here spouting things about zombies and uh, you know uh, attacks of the undead, uh, flesh-eating, wall-climbing monsters running about, uh, you know, no, no, killing no, no, soldiers. No, no. We actually saw one. Of, wait, hold on. What oh, now you've seen what this. Was what was that? What was what? You, I can't see. Just... I can't see anything. I'm on the revolver call. Ryan, did you see that? <laughs> oh shit! Oh, gentlemen, God! gentlemen. Okay, hold on. This is oh, some sort God! of trickery. It's eating my flesh. It's ripping me apart. Ah! Ah! This has been a presentation of the Press Corps. Foxhole Flash is hosted by Press Corps Chief Editor Jeffrey Jennings. Mari Sharp is the Colonial Correspondent. Dr. Oliver Boland Ponsonby Esquire is the Warden Correspondent. And Ken Rister is the handsome host of Casualties. Make sure to follow the Press Corps on Twitch radio services, YouTube motion pictures, Instagram photography, and the Twitter Telegram service at Press Corps Games. For more info, including newswire access and interview opportunities, visit Press Corps World Headquarters through the Discord link below.